Welcome to the Running Network Show. Join us each time as we explore the people, the places, and the events that shape our great sport. Absolutely fantastic day out there today. We had a very dramatic race, which I think we all anticipated and expected. And congratulations to you to all three of our winners up before you. Um, I'm going to ask the first question to Dina, um, because I was very intrigued by your comment on the plane. You said you'd accomplished phase 113 and phase 115. And so, obviously today, you accomplished two very important goals. Not only did you make the team, but you won the race. Um, I think everybody would just like to know if the strategy um, was consistent with what you expected the race to be, and if there was ever a moment that you thought maybe you picked the wrong strategy. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Well, it's a, a running joke, I guess, between my husband and I that we break these, uh, these trips up into phases and um, even so much as waking up in the morning is considered a phase. So, um, yeah, I, I accomplished my, my, two, my two major goals coming into this race was um, first to make the team, that's, that was the most important thing, to solidify a spot on the U.S. team, and secondly to, to win, but I... I Thought for as comfortable as possible the first half of the race, and there was a, a good portion of the middle section of the race that I thought I may have misjudged um, Magdalena's strength. Um, but as I picked up the pace halfway through, um, I was hearing people on the on the sidelines. They're always shouting out information. Some of it uh, more worthless than others, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, for the most part, the, the crowds kept yelling. I was a, a minute 40 seconds back, and um, so I picked up the pace a little bit more, trying to make everything very conservative, all my moves very conservative. Tried to pick up the pace a little bit more, and I kept hearing a minute 40, and kept hearing a minute 40. So there was a, a big section of the race in there that I said, well, at, at least I'm going to get my, at least if I, if I stay this strong, I can be the team. So I, I was already, um, already kind of coming to, to second place. As soon as I heard that my lead, um, when I started picking it up a little bit more, I didn't want to, I tried not to dip um, anything under 525 pace, uh, 520 to 525 pace, because I wanted to, to make sure that I was staying in the right energy zones that, um, that uh, my, I, the gap started uh, shortening a little bit and, and that kind of fueled my fire a little bit more so I, I started, to, started to gain confidence again um, going into the last loop. So it was really um, just the, the second half of the last lap that I really thought that I could, I could win this race um, but knew that, um, pretty sure that Matt Lynn and Blake and I were going to be the three going to Beijing this summer and I, I couldn't think of a group of better girls to be on this US team with. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much and clearly uh, a well-executed strategy and uh, congratulations. Dina, this question is for you. Waltham will always claim you as their own, your birthplace. Um, what did it mean to you to win the Olympic trials in Boston, which is steeped in tradition when it comes to marathon? Um, the, the crowds out there, I think we could all attest to the crowds just being amazing today. That's, I don't think um, there was um, specifically hometown favorites, but really just the crowd supporting U.S. athletes. This is Dina Castor. Dina is definitely picking up the pace and looking very strong. Crowd recognizing Dina now, bib number one. getting closer to Magdalena and the emotions 
that you were feeling just as you pulled even, or actually she was pulling even to you, and then you passed her. Um, the, the moment that I was getting ready to, to pull into the lead, I, um, I was really just fulfilling my, the second half of my dream of this race, and it was really, uh, um, I guess, a testament to, to kind of, um, well, like, maybe succumbing to second place in the middle of the race, and then, um, and then being able to rally. My coach gave me some great advice leading up to the race, as he always does. Before my the first marathon that I ever won in Chicago, he um, told me right before the race to define myself that day, and it just stuck in my mind. Today, before the race. Um, it was drawing on the strength of my teammates, but sometimes as individuals we don't have all the strength to get through a race, and so my teammates were there for me today, and I felt that. So, kind of drawing on the strength that as a collective group, my Running USA um, team in Man Flakes has, together, collectively, has um, all the strength in the world, but as individuals we sometimes need to help each other out in, in that respect. So um, I drew on the team's strength today and, and really used that to, to give me the strength to, to rally and, and start pushing towards Magdalena and, and passing her. So it's definitely a, a testament to my teammates that I could that I could gather gather that strength and, and, and catch up for the win today. And then just the exhilaration of, of moving into first place is, is what moves you to the finish line. It was a, um, a surge of energy and um, kind of takes care of itself after you do the work to, to catch somebody. Dina, Jay Wynn from Robert Hudson Gazette. I believe you are the first two-time Olympic marathoner from the United States. I believe only Kathy O'Brien has that distinction. Congratulations. How do you feel about that? I didn't know that, but um, but thank you, and it is an, an absolute honor that um, it, this is going to be my, my third Olympic team. I was in the, uh, Sydney, Australia for the Olympics in 2000 in the 10K, and um, really, really proud to make my first Olympic team then, and, um, and it feels just as sweet the third time around, so it's a, um, just a, an honor to, an honor to, to be on a, a U.S. team again, and um, again, I really grateful to be going over with two very talented women.